All right, we talked two-dimensional figures yesterday, uh, so let's talk three-dimensional figures today. We're not going to go super in-depth here, because uh, once we get to chapter 12 later in the year, we're going to spend a lot of time on surface area and volume. So today, I'm, we're going to give you formulas for those so we can snap them off, um, and we're just going to talk more so of what is a three-dimensional figure. So first things first, we have polyhedrons. Okay, uh, A polyhedron is a solid with flat surfaces, so flat, that's important, that encloses a single region of space. So for example, up here I got my uh, rectangular prism, and I got a little real life example of a rectangular prism. Um, in this case, I have a Kleenex box, right? So prisms and pyramids, right, all of our polyhedrons are made up of certain things, okay? Um, the big flat surface parts of these, right, we call those the faces, right? So all the flat surface part, we call those the faces. And if I look at this rectangular prism, this has six faces, doesn't it? It's got a front and a back, a side and a side, and a top and a bottom for a total of six faces. Okay, well, where each face meets, so this top face and this front face meet on what we call an edge. So all of our segments are edges. So top face, front face, they meet on this edge right here. Okay, and how many edges would this have? Well, if I think about it, I can count them on my Kleenex, so look at my picture. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's one in the back corner for eight back there, right? And then I got nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 total edges. And then obviously where the edges meet, we have something as well. So if I look at, this front edge here and this side edge here, they meet right on this little point in the corner here, which we call vertices. So vertices, and if we look at how many vertices we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Four on the top face and four on the bottom face there in the back corner. So eight total vertices. And that's what we're gonna do today when we talk about this. And then we're also gonna name all these. So in this case, for prisms, okay, we name prisms by the base shape. Well, in this case, my base shape is a rectangular, or rectangle, so I call it a rectangular prism. A rectangular prism. And all prisms have two bases, that's important. Okay, and we name it by its base shape. Pyramids only have one base. So for example, so I have my rectangular prism right up here. If I did a rectangular pyramid, if you look at that, it only has one base. It comes to a point up top. Okay, so that's the difference. Pyramids have one base, uh, prisms have two bases. Things that are not polyhedrons, are cylinders, cones, and spheres, right? Because it has to be a flat surface. And let's get some practice at drawing these. I didn't draw my sphere because that one's kind of tough. I'm not the best sphere drawer. But cylinders aren't so bad. Okay, it's like a pop can. I'm going to start with my top, my top surface. Bring the sides of my cylinder down and put the bottom half circle. And then just do your dashes for anything that you can't see that's in the background. So there's a cylinder. Okay, not too bad. Cone, it's just like a cylinder, but it, it's more so like a pyramid. It comes to a point. So I'm going to start with my little half circle again. Come to the point, come to the point, and then the part that's in the background. Okay, so the cone, like an ice cream cone upside down. Right? So you get some practice drawing those. Um, it's good to do because it helps to draw pictures when we get into story problems. So those are not, they're not polyhedrons. Okay, they got to be made of flat surfaces. Well, we're going to do the first part. You're going to name or decide if it's a polyhedron, right? So as long as it's got flat surfaces, it's a prism or a pyramid, it's going to be a polyhedron. Then identify the solid. Okay, we're going to give it a name. And then it says, if it is a polyhedron, name the bases, faces, edges, and vertices. Well, instead of name it, we're just going to number how many of each there are. Okay. Uh, so let's start. Is this a polyhedron? Yes, it is. It's a prism. So yes, it's a polyhedron. Well, name it then. Well, it's... Base shape is what? A rectangle, so a rectangular prism. Okay, and now let's say how many bases it has. You can just put B. How many faces? F. 
how many edges E and how many vertices B. Well, if I look at bases, we all know prisms have two base or two bases, right? And rectangular prisms, it depends on which one you want to make the base. Usually you just make the bottom and the top the bases. Um, it depends on how it's laying, I guess. So there's two bases here. Faces we already talked about in rectangular prisms, there's six faces, right? Top, bottom, both sides, and the front and back. Edges, uh, we went through that, there were 12 of them, right? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then vertices, all my little corner points we found out there's eight, right? Four on the bottom, four on the top. Okay, and that's all we're doing. So I save its polyhedron, name it, and then number how many bases, faces, edges, and vertices there are. Let's try a different shape now. Would this be a polyhedron? Well, yeah, it's, a, it's still a prism. Okay, so yes. And how do we name? Well, we name it by its base shape. If you look at my base shape, my base is the rectangle. Just because the rectangle is on the bottom doesn't mean it's the base. My base has to have the exact same base parallel and opposite of it. So if I look, here I have a six-sided figure, and on the opposite side I have another six-sided figure. So there's my bases. Well, what shape is that? Six sides means it's a hexagon. So that's a hexagonal prism in this case. And now let's number our bases, our faces, our edges, and our vertices. Okay, well, we already talked about it's a prism, so I know it's got two bases. Faces, well, I got my two bases, and then I have what? One, bottom, side, two, three, four, five, six total faces going around the outside. So six plus my two bases, or a total of eight faces. I look at the edges. Well, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Same with my other uh, base. Six over here, so that's 12. And then I also have six lines going. So a total of 18. And my vertices, pretty sloppy there, sorry about that. My vertices, all right, he's basically double how many sides. So here I got six vertices. So that means I got six on the other side for a total of 12. Yeah, that's all we're doing. Well, we're going to talk just briefly about surface area and volume. And we're going to go way more in depth at the end of the school year on this. But surface area, um, it's just that the area of all the faces added together. Area of all the faces added together. Okay? Um, and we know how to find areas of rectangles, triangles, um, things like that. Volume, well, that's the measure of the amount of space enclosed. So, for example, like a pop can is measured in volume. It's what fills up the pop can, right? Everything that's inside. So like the soda that's inside, I'm filling this guy up. Um, that would be the volume. And this is stuff that we've talked, you've talked about um, in previous years. So now we're going to expand out. We have, we have some formulas here. Okay? And you're going to be given this um, come test time until later in the year once we expand on it, and then we won't. But for right now, we are. We're just, we're just going with the concept of it. Okay? So if you look... T is going to stand for total surface area. P is going to stand for the perimeter. Um, and then we have a couple other things here. B for volume, capital B for area of the base. And then just a couple more things over on the right there. Um, but all these formulas are going to help you find the, the various things. So if it's a prism, here's the surface area, here's the volume. Okay, I'll go on all the way down for these different shapes. So let's just use one of these um, in an example. So right here it says find the surface area and volume of a cone. Well, let me go grab both these formulas. So I'm going back. Here's my cone. So I got surface area. I'm going to write this guy down on the next page. T equals pi RL. So we got, oh, going the wrong way. T equals pi RL plus, what does it say? Pi R squared. Pi R squared, that sounds familiar. Okay, and we'll talk about that here in a sec. And then we got, Volume is one third times the well, pi r squared h. Okay, and we'll break those down just a little bit. Not much, okay? Um, but we're just going to apply those things. Well, r it looks like we have is the radius of the base. h is the height, the vertical height. And l over here would be my slant height, my slant height. So to find the surface area, let's just plug in information that we know. 
So pi times r, radius is 3, times the slant height of 5, plus pi radius squared. Okay? And like I said, we're not going to talk much about this um, because we're expanding on it in Chapter 12 where these formulas come from. We're actually going to derive these formulas. So right now we're just plugging in and solving. We're not going to worry about where they come from. And then simplify here. So I got 15 pi plus 9 pi, right? 3 squared is 9, for a total of 24 pi. And I need a unit, so centimeters squared. And we can leave it as 24 pi because that's more exact. If I would actually take my calculator and type in 24 times pi, I end up with about 75.4 centimeters squared. But I had to round, right? So this is a more exact answer. So we can leave it just like that. And then for volume, same thing. I'm just plugging in information. Radius of 3 and a height of 4. And we go through volume. So we got 3 squared is 9. 9 times 4 is 36. So this is going to be 36. Third pi times 36. Well, a third of 36, right? One third times 36. 3 goes into 36 12 times. So I got 12 pi. And now centimeters cubed for volume. Remember that? Cubic centimeters. That's how we represent that. And I can leave it just as 12 pi. Okay, so just applying those formulas. Um, we're, we're not going to worry about where they come from as of right now. Uh, we're not going to go through this whole thing, but Mike has created a mail mailing tube which can be used to mail posters and architectural plans. The diameter of the base is 3 and 3 fourths inches, and the height is 2 and 2 thirds feet. Find the measure to the nearest tenth. Okay? A lot of words. Uh, anytime you're given something like this, draw yourself a picture. Okay? And this were uh, that practice of drawing yourself a cylinder, right? A mailing tube. Tube means a cylinder. Might help to draw yourself a picture so you can see what you're talking about. All right, and it states I got a diameter of the base. Well, here's my base. Diameter is all the way across. So I know the diameter is 3 and 3 fourths inches. So I'm going to label that here. And then it tells me that the height is 2 and 2 thirds feet. Okay, before I do anything, what do I notice that it gave me? One is feet, one is inches. One is feet and one is inches. That's important, right? We never want to work with different units when we start going through formulas. So immediately switch one to the other, okay? We want to work with the same units. Um, and it's a lot easier taking the feet and going into inches, right? Because all I have to do is take two and two-thirds times 12, right? So I want two and two-thirds feet into inches. So I just take it times 12. So it's really 12 over 1, and I better make this improper so I can multiply. So 3 times 2 plus 2, right? 3 times 2 plus 2. So I get 8 over 3 times 12 over 1. And I can cross cancel here. So 3 goes into there. 4 times 8 times 4 is 32. So that's really 32 inches. So I can replace that. 32 inches for the height. Okay, and then we just go through and apply our volume formula, and um, I'm going to write this down, volume is area of the base, which is pi r squared, times the height, and that's back a couple pages, and so we would just plug in our information, so v equals pi, radius of 3 and 3 fourths, or I could say what, 3 point, oh, that's not the radius, that's the diameter, isn't it? Remember, radius would be half of that, would be half of the diameter which gives us 1.875. So a lot of things we got to work through here. 1.875 squared times the height of 32. And then I would go through and solve and give it a label. Okay. And down here where it says how much cardboard will it take to make the tube? Well, how much cardboard, if I think about that, that's the surface area, isn't it? It's kind of like the wrapping around it, right? How much cardboard it will take. So the surface area, let's go back and look at our formula here for a cylinder right here. Basically it's, here's the two bases, the area of the two bases, and this is the outer surface. And like I said, we'll talk about that later. So we got two pi rh plus two pi r squared. 
And that's just a matter of plugging in the information that you just came up with. So 2 pi, the radius we just said is 1.875, a height of 32, plus 2 pi, 1.875 squared. And then just going through the math and simplifying, right? Follow your order of operations. Then it says find the measure to the nearest tenth, in which we have 399.1. Remember, don't round to the very end, so you plug everything into your calculator. And we're talking uh, surface area, so it would be inches squared. So the biggest thing here is to notice that hey, I had two different units, get in the same units, um, and then draw yourself a picture and apply those into your formulas. All right, there's your assignment. We'll see you tomorrow.